Man, I love kids. I, I have a, a, a slew of kids, to say the least. I got three of them. My oldest boy just turned five today. Everybody give it up for that birthday. Yeah, he just turned five today. And I, I like the oldest boy for a reason, because he grow, he's like, I guess he grew a lot faster than the rest of them. I know they're younger, but it just seems like he's closer to my level than the rest of the kids. And, uh, when we first moved here, my wife was getting her hair done and in, uh, in the hairdresser salon place that y'all ladies go to, they had a Wii. Nintendo Wii. Y'all not familiar with it? Little game console, you got the controller, you swing your arm, the thing on the screen swings his arm, you, you throw the ball, the ball throws on the screen. It does whatever he wants to do. You know, we didn't have those as kids, but it does it now. So I was like, you know what, baby, I'm gonna buy one of these, and me and Taylor, we gonna play the Wii, right? And on the Wii, you can create your own little characters and make it look like you. You know what I'm saying? If you got a mold, you can put a mold. You got a mustache, mustache, afro, afro, whatever you can think of, you can put it on your little character. So I made a little character that looks just like my oldest boy, and it has his name. And so when he plays the game, he gets into the game because it's him. So if he's playing boxing and you hit him in the rib, he goes with the game as if you just hit him for real. So I had a friend over here just moved into the area, just got into the unit, so I invited him over and he was gonna play the Wii with my son, right? And so they were playing the boxing. And he fighting, he fighting, he fighting with my, with my oldest boy, and the oldest boy wins. Little kid versus grown man, he beats him, right? So my boy, he's happy. He's jumping around the house. He's yelling and screaming, you know, just about shouting. You know what I'm saying? That's so why I'm like, oh man, he beating this dude. So the guy, grown man, got a little mad. And so he, you know, he wiped the sweat off his face. He was like, I want a rematch. And so Gina was like, come on, we can play again. It's him, you know, we can play again. But no, this guy, he had a brunch. I want a rematch. And so, you know, they, I started the game back up, they start playing, and so it was a hard fought battle. He give him two left, my son give him two more. He give him another left. To make a long story short, he beat my son. Right? Knocked him out in the third round. The character goes down. Boom. The guy gets happy and starts flexing. <laughs> like he didn't did something. Not even worrying about Jalen over here crying. I mean, because now he didn't just got knocked out in real life. So he's kind of like on the floor, laying back crying about this Wii game. And so it was like an awkward moment throughout the whole house because now the son's crying and he's over here celebrating. He look at me and I'm over there laughing. I thought it was the funniest thing ever because he had just knocked out the little kid and started celebrating. But, oh dang, he's looking at me like he mad. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> yeah. How many of y'all love coming to church? Enjoy coming to church? Yeah. Alright, even if you don't enjoy it, you're still clapping. <laughs> Man, I, I enjoy coming to church and I enjoy older people who come to church. Older people who are in church, the ones who've been faithful like Mother Franklin, she's been faithful for so many years. I love that. And it reminds me of a story of a, a little older lady, right? And she used to wake up every morning and walk out on her porch and say, Thank you, Jesus. God is good. God is God. And she lived next door to a man who didn't believe in God. And every morning he would have to sit up there and watch the old lady come out and thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is God on her front porch. And he used to upset him so much, right? So one day she went outside and she said, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is God. I'm hungry, I don't have anything to eat, my refrigerator's bad, but God is God. And she walked back in. So the guy, he got a bright idea. He went out, bought a whole bunch of groceries, put it on the lady's porch the night before, right? And then he went and waited in the bushes the next morning for her to come out. So she come out, she sees the groceries, she says, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, God is God. I asked for it and you supplied. The atheist man jumps up out the bush and says, you see that? God didn't do that, I bought those groceries. She said, well thank you Jesus, you got me groceries and you made the devil pay for me. <laughs> man, and you know, we, we come to church and we, we do the offering. Every church does an offering. You ever been to a church where they did like five offerings in a row? 
they want you to make round trips on the offering table. But they get up before and let you know what they're looking for. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try to get 700 tonight. We try to get never mind, it's 20 of y'all. We trying to get 700 tonight. So you roll around and they count and you can hear them counting up top. 75, 76, 77. need y'all to come back around. I need y'all to dig deep. Dig deep. And I'm sitting back thinking, if they don't take food stamps, they ain't gonna get this 700. Cause I ain't got it like that. I ain't got it to be giving up this 700. So you make another trip around, then eventually you just walking around for the exercise. You just switch shoes. You didn't got your Nikes on. You walk. You hit the table one good time to let them know your attention. Just, yeah. Keep on going. But man, they take up offers and everything like that. But a pastor, and pastor, you agree with me on this one, right? Pastors love tithers. Right, right. People who tithe faithfully. Right. Especially if you're a baller. If you make like a lot of money and you tithe, pastor love that. Because he know you're faithful, and that 10% coming. And if you're a millionaire and you get 10%, I'm, that's a lot. I'm not good with numbers too much. But yeah, that's a lot, right? All right, another story. Two men, shipwrecked, right? Shipwrecked. Got on the island, one man starts just bugging out. Oh my God, we're gonna die, nobody's gonna come get us, we're never gonna be saved. And the other guy was like, man, chill, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying, we'll be saved before tomorrow. And so the other guy said, man, did you not hear me? There's no telephones, there's no nothing, there's nobody can find us, we're gonna die. And the man said, man, chill, I'm not worried about it. He started building him a little hut. And so the guy, he's out there walking in the water, the other, first guy walking through the water, trying to make water signals and stuff, just anything to try to get himself saved. He said, man, you need to help me. You gotta be part of your own rescue. We, we're not gonna leave it. He said, look, man, I make a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? And I'm tired. That's $100,000 a year. Oh, my pastor's gonna find me. He gonna find me on this island. I, we gonna get saved. <laughs> Hey, look, y'all been good. Love y'all.